Hello friends, welcome back to this short tutorial on inflammation from pathology made simple at ILO pathology. Well, in the previous tutorial that is inflammation part 4, uh, we had discussed about uh, some general principles of chemical mediators. We talked in detail about histamine and serotonin. Okay, if you want to uh, watch that video, you can click on the link below, below this video. And if you are visiting here for the first time, I would advise you to go through all the four uh, parts of uh, inflammation so that there is continuity in learning. Okay. Now, in today's tutorial, uh, we'll be talking about arachidonic acid metabolites and their role in inflammation. The points which I'm trying to cover in uh, the next 10 minutes uh, would be uh, knowing what are arachidonic acid and, metab and their metabolites, how are they synthesized and their role in inflammation. And lastly, we will uh, also touch upon the applied aspects and this is very important. The role of arachidonic acid metabolites in inflammation is very important for us to understand the concepts of the way inflammation is treated. Coming back to uh, inflammation, whenever there is a tissue injury, we need to know that there is injury to the cells within these tissues and these cells could be neutrophils, mast cells, platelets, the endothelial cells and macrophages. And what we need to understand here is that, you know, uh, during the process of cell injury, when the injury is continuous and repetitive or irreversible, then there is a lot of calcium which moves inside the cytoplasm. This increase in the intracellular calcium levels activates many enzymes within the cells. One of these enzymes is activation of phospholipase A2. Now, let us understand that arachidonic acid is normally present in the bound form or esterified to the membrane phospholipid in each of these above cells, okay, in all the cells of the body for that matter. Okay. So now, whenever there is an activation of phospholipase A2, this arachidonic acid, which is esterified in the membrane phospholipid, is now released as free arachidonic acid. Now, whenever there is a free arachidonic acid available, it is rapidly converted to the bioactive mediators and these mediators are referred to as eicosanoids. The eicosanoids means it is derived from 20 carbon fatty acids. Eicosa is actually a Greek word which means 20. Now the prostaglandins, thromboxane, leukotrienes and lipoxins are the eicosanoids which are formed from the arachidonic acid. Now let us understand how these are formed. So basically arachidonic acid is metabolized via these two pathways. One of them is cyclooxygenase pathway. Another one is 5-lipooxygenase pathway. This cyclooxygenase pathway is brought about by enzymes cyclooxygenase, cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2. This arachidonic acid is converted to prostaglandin G2 by the help of these cyclooxygenases. This is prostaglandin G2 which further gets converted to prostaglandin H2. With the help of the tissue specific synthesis, this prostaglandin H2 is further converted to prostaglandin D2, prostaglandin E2, prostaglandin F2 alpha, prostaglandin I2, which is otherwise called as prostacycline, and lastly, thromboxane A2. The same arachidonic acid via 5 lipooxygenase pathway through an intermediate called 5-HPETE, which is hydroperoxy eicosatetraenoic acid, gets converted to 5-HETE first, which is actually hydroxy eicosatetraenoic acid, which gets converted to leukotriene B4. This 5-HPETE gets converted to leukotriene A4, which can give rise to leukotriene B4. And also, it gets converted to leukotriene C4 and leukotriene D4. And lastly, leukotriene E4. This 5-HPETE via 12-lipooxygenase pathway gets converted to lipoxin A4 and lipoxin B4. So finally, these prostaglandins, the leukotrienes and lipoxins or the eicosanoids or the mediators which are derived from arachidonic acid via these two pathways. The prostaglandins are actually produced by the mast cells, the macrophages, endothelial cells and other cells. So it means to say that not necessarily or not always the arachidonic acid is metabolized via both the pathways in each and every cell. Okay. There are some cells where cyclooxygenase enzymes are predominant. There are some cells where lipooxygenase enzymes are predominant. So that is the reason why prostaglandins are synthesized by these cells, which are mast cells, macrophages, endothelial cells, where the cyclooxygenase enzymes are more in number. And leukotrienes and lipoxins are synthesized by, are produced by leukocytes and mast cells, where the five lipooxygenase enzymes are more predominant. Now, understanding the effects of these mediators, that is the prostaglandins and leukotrienes in inflammation. 
in this illustration i have tried to uh, simplify the way uh, you know these uh, icosanoids act consider that this broken line uh, is a normal vessel or a blood vessel and this part is a dilated part and this is a constricted part and this is a dilated part again so the prostaglandin d2 e2 f2 alpha and prostaglandin i2 that is prostacycline results in vasodilation lipoxin a4 and b4 results in vasodilation whereas leukotrienes leukotriene c4 d4 and e4 along with thromboxane a2 are the ones which causes vasoconstriction see apart from vasodilation and vasoconstriction there are other effects as well one of these is platelet aggregation these mediators can either inhibit platelet aggregation or promote platelet aggregation so prostacycline or pg i2 is the one which inhibits platelet aggregation whereas thromboxane a2 is the one which promotes platelet aggregation the next important uh, effect of these mediators is bronchoconstriction bronchoconstriction is brought about by leukotriene c4 d4 and e4 also thromboxane a2 the most important effect of leukotrienes is bronchoconstriction bronchoconstriction is also brought about by pgf2 alpha this is what i was trying to explain in the previous tutorial that you know these mediators can have different effect on the same type of cells for example the smooth muscle in the vessel wall reacts differently to pgf2 alpha where it causes relaxation resulting in vasodilatation or vasodilation whereas the same mediator on the extravascular smooth muscle that is the bronchial smooth muscle causes constriction resulting in bronchoconstriction that means to say that the inflammatory mediators or the chemical mediators they have diverse action on similar targets or diverse targets similar actions so the bronchodilation is brought about by pg d2 pg e2 and prostacycline another important uh, effect in inflammation is chemotaxis which is brought about by leukotriene b4 leukotriene b4 is one of the most important chemoattractants whereas lipoxin a4 and lipoxin b4 is the one which inhibits chemotaxis so overall this particular illustration helps you in understanding the various effects of arachidonic acid metabolite apart from these effects prostaglandins also mediate pain and fever which are the most important systemic manifestations of inflammation now what did we understand so far we understood that the metabolites of arachidonic acid that is the prostaglandins the leukotrienes and lipoxin mediates vasodilation vasoconstriction bronchodilation bronchoconstriction platelet aggregation and inhibition chemo attraction and inhibition of chemotaxis which means to say that these mediators can mediate possibly every step of inflammation so what this is where we need to understand the applied aspects of understanding the role of these mediators in inflammation since we know that these mediators can mediate possibly every step of inflammation inhibition of the production of these mediators can suppress inflammation so this is a fundamental principle behind anti inflammatory drugs now coming back to the arachidonic acid metabolism via cyclooxygenase pathway if there is inhibition of cyclooxygenase 1 or 2 what happens all the prostaglandins production will be stopped this is what is brought about by non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs like aspirin ibuprofen diclofenac what does these drugs do they inhibit cyclooxygenase pathway the production of prostaglandins is inhibited that means there is suppression of inflammation there is reduction of pain and fever isn't it now moving on to the second pathway that is via lipooxygenase pathway if there is inhibition of lipooxygenase pathway what happens there will be no production of leukotrienes and lipoxins okay the most important components that the most important metabolites from this pathway is leukotrienes nsaids you know they cannot act on five lipooxygenase so the first anti five lipooxygenase was zaluton so what happens whenever uh, this particular drug is given so basically as i told you leukotrienes the production of leukotrienes is stopped leukotrienes as we all know that it is a most important bronchoconstrictor and the bronchoconstriction is the most important mechanism in bronchial asthma which is a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease so that is the reason why xylitone as a 5 lipoxygenase inhibitor is used in the treatment of bronchial asthma so in summary we understood what are arachidonic acid metabolites how are they synthesized the roles of these metabolites in inflammation applied aspects of understanding the effects of these metabolites in inflammation thanks for watching if you like this video please hit the like button do comment don't forget to subscribe so that you will get to know about more and more videos which are going to come thank you